Habituation and sensitization are forms of non-associative learning which lead to short-term memory. Let's try to understand what are they and what are the physiological mechanisms underlying these forms of learning. First of all, as I said that they are forms of non-associative learning that is in habituation and sensitization there is no association between two different stimuli which are causing the response. In habituation basically if a harmless or a neutral stimulus is given repeatedly there will be a decrease in response to the stimulus. See suppose a touch stimulus initially causes a withdrawal response but if the touch stimulus is given repeatedly then it no longer elicits a response. In day to day life you can understand it uh, by one example where when you wear some cloth you feel the cloth on yourself but later on you even don't realize that the cloth is actually touching the skin. So behaviorally if we see this is a required response because somewhere a decision is being made that it is a neutral stimulus and hence irrelevant for survival. So unnecessary our resources should not be directed for responding to irrelevant stimulus and that's why habituation is actually the most common form of learning. Now what's the physiological basis of this learning? Well the studies have been done in a species aplasia. So when its siphon is uh, touched once there is a gill withdrawal. However when the siphon is touched repeatedly that is with a harmless stimulus slowly the gill withdrawal response decreases and finally there is no withdrawal of the gill. So why is this occurring? Well, this decrease in response occurs due to inactivation of calcium channels in presynaptic neuron that is the neuron which is carrying the information about the stimulus. And if uh, calcium channels are inactivated, what will happen? There will be decreased entry of calcium into the presynaptic neuron causing a decrease in intracellular calcium and uh, you know that calcium is responsible for the release of the neurotransmitter. So decrease intracellular calcium will cause decrease in the release of the neurotransmitters. So less neurotransmitter will act on postsynaptic neuron and hence decrease in voltage change in postsynaptic uh, neuron will occur. So if uh, voltage change uh, that is the greater potential is uh, less then the number of action potentials which are generated will also be less or if the voltage change doesn't reach the threshold then there will be no action potential at all. So there will be no response at all. Fine. So that was habituation. Coming to next type of non-associative learning that is sensitization. In sensitization if a harmful or noxious stimulus is given it elicits a response. Uh, see the difference here in habituation we were talking about harmless and non-noxious stimulus which is irrelevant to the species. In sensitization we are talking about harmful or noxious stimulus and this harmful stimulus will elicit a response. Then for some times after harmful stimulus what happens that even a harmless neutral stimulus which is irrelevant for the individual that will also elicit a strong response getting it. So it's like uh, suppose there is a very loud sound uh, suddenly and you get a startled. Then even a small sound for some time will elicit a response from you. So that is known as sensitization. But just take note here even we are talking uh, that there is a harmless stimuli which is going to elicit a response. Here we are not talking about the pairing of the stimulus right. They are two different stimulus. They are not being given together or after some time interval, some limited time interval between them as happens in conditioned learning. So there is no association between the stimuli. Fine. In short, there is increase in responsiveness to mild or non-noxious stimulus following noxious stimulus. Again, what is the physiological basis of this? Let's try to see. So as we saw in habituation, for sensitization also, the experiments had been done in aplasia species. So what was done is that if a noxious stimulus is given to the tail, the neuron from here connects via interneuron to the motor neuron causing gill withdrawal. Now this interneuron also makes contact with the touch sensory neuron presynaptically which we saw in habituation. So this is making contact with the touch sensory neuron as well. 
So what happens that there is a response so that is gear withdrawal due to this pathway but it causes some changes in other pathway the touch sensory pathway as well. Basically it releases a neurotransmitter serotonin which acts on this uh, touch sensory neuron presynaptically and it actually increases CMP in this neuron intracellularly. So increase in CMP what it does is that it blocks potassium channels. Due to this when subsequent touch stimulus is given what will happen there will be action potential it will reach to this area right the presynaptic terminal but you see the potassium channels have been blocked. So the action potential which is there, there will be delayed repolarization of this action potential because uh, you know that uh, potassium flux is important for re repolarization. So if potassium channels are blocked, there will be delayed repolarization and there will be increase in the duration of the action potential. So because of this increased action potential duration, there is increased opening of voltage gated calcium channels. And uh, there is increase in calcium entry and hence increased release of neurotransmitter by this touch sensory neuron. So further you can guess that if there is increased neurotransmitter release there will be more change of voltage on the postsynaptic neuron and hence there will be more generation of action potential and more response. Fine. So that was about habituation and sensitization. Habituation decrease in response to non-noxious stimulus and sensitization increase in response to a non-noxious stimulus following a noxious stimulus. Fine. Now before we end just something to remember here that uh, they are non-associative forms of learning as I already told and both of them are causing changes only in presynaptic neuron. Right. We saw the mechanism. It is the changes only in presynaptic neurons which are happening not in postsynaptic neuron. And these changes are only transient. Thus, it is responsible for only short term memory. So, remember habituation and sensitization cause the formation of short term memory. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button and share the video with others. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.